All right, so I'm back. I've had a sauna and a swim, and I'm feeling a little bit more relaxed. A little more loose, a little more wave, a little less particle. And i just reflecting on my time in Iceland, and I came across this uh, symbol that I saw on a cap. I needed a hat just to keep the sun off my face. And uh, I'm not sure how to announce it, but it it means the helm of awe and also the helm of terror. And it's been sitting with me for a while. You know, I had the Orca Manifest, which is, you know, it's very awe-inspiring and it's also terrifying. Uh, and it, it's a bit of a symbol for the unknown to me, this awesome power of intelligent love and unconditional love. And, you know, when I first heard unconditional love, I thought about, you know, all smoochy and cuddling and all that sort of stuff and warm fuzzies. But it's more than that for me. It's this awesome power that you know allows everything and anything to take place and it has no bias um, it's not it doesn't judge it has no conditions you can create anything you like um, and at the same time it can seem uncaring because you can create anything you know whether you like it or not and in those moments, like when I was feeling trapped in Iceland and I felt like I was getting fleeced by the country and everyone in it was out to just strip me down to nothing, um, which is part of the process, obviously. Um, it's obviously a necessary stage in my development in terms of being able to release all those programs that limit me because one thing that I was feeling when I was traveling and, and seeing all these beautiful epic places in Iceland um, because the landscape is like this raw awesomeness that is just stripped away and left down to the raw essence one thing you notice about Iceland when you get there is there's hardly any trees you know, there's like no trees except for the ones that are planted by people to give them a buffer from the, you know, being exposed to this raw, these raw elements. And, you know, there's so many things that have been bouncing around in my mind that I want to speak about. And uh, sometimes they come out in these videos and sometimes, you know, I, I just finish one and go, oh, I should have inserted that in there. That would have been perfect in that moment. And one of the things was the time scale because there, you know, being the most upper habitable continent on the planet, um, 64, 66 degrees north, um, the time feels different. The time cycles are different. Although we're still running on linear time up, up there and the watch cycles around, the sun sets differently. Uh, you get 24 hour sunlight there. And even, you know, with the sun starts to set at, at a normal time, but it doesn't actually ever set. The sun disappears behind the horizon, but the light lingers all the way until morning. So you have twilight all night, which is this really cool place in between sleep and awake that we're all venturing towards in meditation but when you're having to deal with 12 hours of it every day it and it's relentless it just does not stop um, when you want to break when you want to stop you can't and that's when I really came into that helm of awe and terror because it was like 
you know, in the presence of this awesome power, you just, it, it's like sparring, you know, with when you go sparring with some of these guys who are really good, you know, black belts and above, you get into a situation and you know, before it even happens, you know, you're, you're fucked. Like they've got you in uh, 50 different ways and there's nothing you can do about it except surrender. So, you know, very humbling experience to have to surrender to that kind of power, which isn't trying to hurt or, you know, do away with you unless, you know, you're this, you know, low level energy that is so far away from it. But if you can become attuned to it and get coherent with it, um, it's always encouraging you towards it more. But it's not like in a human mind where you go, okay, well, even like the Tour de France, you know, that I'm watching on TV here or some bike race, it's in German. I think it's a Tour de France. Um, you know, it's a grueling, grueling race and it goes on and on and on for, you know, weeks or a month or whatever it is. But it eventually finishes and then the riders get time off and then they train in the off season and they get ready for the next one. But this power, this consciousness, this universal everything, it doesn't ever stop. It's been going on and on since before time began. You know, it is the thing that contains time. And as much time as you can possibly comprehend, whether it's millions or billions or trillions of years or eons, it was there before that and it was creating before that. And it seems like we're, you know, down in this dense vibration going back towards it. But from where it's at, it's already complete and whole and it's been that way for forever so how do you embody that how do you get into a position to embody that you know I wrote in one of my articles it's like trying to download the entire internet onto your laptop it's just you just how does it you can't it can't compress information that much into a tiny space or can you and that's, this is the conundrum that I, I, with my human mind, is really struggling to, to accept, is how do you compress everything into a space within itself while it's still containing itself, right? Like, it, it's this holographical fractal principle where it just, it's endless. And you guess you're the center of it wherever you are. But the thing is, it's it's so free-flowing, it's so fluid that the slightest thought or emotion starts moving you in one direction or another. So to be a, a competent and proficient pilot of that movement, um, it takes a lot of skill, a lot of skill. <laughs> 